Okay, everybody, welcome back. This is now part 11 of our terrestrial escape rocket project. Today is actually launch day. It's not a perfect day, but uh, there's almost no wind. It's a good temperature, and uh, the clouds are probably out of 4,000 foot elevation. So uh, today's going to be the day. Uh, it's winter time, and uh, we really need to get this off the ground if we're going to finish it up. So in front of you is a rocket. It measures uh, just six feet once the nose cone is attached. And there are some features that I want to uh, point out to you here. So I'm going to do the first half of this video just pointing out the features on the uh, on the full length rocket, and then the next video right after this is going to be showing you showing off all the features of this. Have a couple designs here. Uh, some of them are right from Rocketman BKK77. You get a chance to check out his video. I uh, really consider him my rocket mentor. And some of them, uh, just little features, are are my designs. Uh, one that I'm actually pretty proud of. If you look over at the the parachute uh, piston that's kind of protruding from the from the forward part of the airframe. That's something we're going to focus on because this is something that will help you reduce the length of your rocket or maybe give you a bigger uh, payload bay or um, parachute bay for your for your avionics or however you design decide to build yours. But uh, let's let's start with the uh, the fins here. Uh, this is a pretty common fin design. I think they call them concept fins and. Uh, that serves two purposes. It gives you plenty of surface area uh, to guide your rocket. And it also it has on the on the very back of it here, from here, it makes it so that when the rocket comes down with the assist of the parachute, it will hit uh, hit the motor and and then it'll just tip and lean over as opposed to it coming down and hitting the fins and and breaking them off. Uh, I'm using cardboard tubes and and wood fins here. So, uh, for lack of anything better to hand, uh, what I've been using all along is actually a hot glue gun and glue sticks. And because I have uh, a 1 8 inch fins, I've decided to put these fin reinforcers on here. So far, unless the rocket actually hit the ground sideways coming down, these have, these have not fallen off. Uh, moving forward a little bit, you'll see in there, that is the very top end of our Rocketman BKK-77 parachute delay grain and what you see there is actually a zip tie attached to the motor and our insulated delay bulk grain uh, I'm sorry our insulated delay grain bulkhead is about right here so I've drilled a hole uh, this is probably gonna have about a 12 second delay that's that's what I planned on here and the way this is operated going up to here this is a spring-loaded piston ejection system so it's gonna pull down You'll see the piston ejection system here very soon. There is a uh, graphite rod that goes down there, and that extension spring goes all the way down here. There's going to be a hook, and it is going to hook right onto that zip tie that you can barely see right there. So uh, let's finish with this part. I'm going to take this, take this apart, and go over the construction, and uh, then we're headed out to the field. It's it's launch day. It's time to get this done. Okay, this is our parachute piston ejection system here. And uh, the key components of this here are the 1.25 inch PVC pipe, uh, two couplers. Uh, one goes on the end that you see is attached. Uh, that's, that's crammed down on there about as, as far as it will go, so that's semi-permanent. Uh, it can be taken off if you need to. The other one I've left free-floating, and it's actually a part of the spring-loaded ejection system itself. And you'll see that here. So we have an extension spring. We have on the end of it, uh, just I used a, a hole saw to cut the, that round piece of wood that you'll see here. And I cut that just for the purpose of a, of a, of a, um, a guide. We want something, as, as this travels down the PVC pipe, we don't want it to flounder and flop around. That would make the ejection somewhat uh, inefficient and, um, and not give us as much power releasing our parachute. So that's just a regular uh, teacup holder. I bought that at the at the hardware store. Same with the spring. The piston rod, this gray piece that you see here, runs the entire length, all the way from here, all the way down to here. And all that is is a 99 cent uh, rod that you can buy. I, I think they use them for electrical fences, things like that. And what I've done is I've used Hartman's Rock Hard Water Putty and made a mold and just drilled a hole one half inch down through once it was actually um, once it was actually finished and enough hard enough there so I could put the rod down through and drilled a series of holes to reduce weight and also to give myself a place to put the zip tie and the zip tie is actually what holds it all together 
you might be able to see it down here. There it is right there. And the extension spring uh, has a, a round piece on it. And what I've done is I've just bent that to the side. You can kind of see it here. It's not perfect. Uh, and that attaches to it, and that's what makes it so the um, it, it gives it compression. It gives it a, a stabilized point where everything else on it is literally moving. So having said that, uh, here's something that I want to bring some attention to. One, one of the problems I've had uh, is I don't like having my rockets, you know, seven or eight feet tall. So I was trying to figure out a way to actually reduce the amount of um, room that I actually needed in the payload or the parachute bay. So I came up with the idea of, of this. If you pull on this, this is actually if the parachute's deploying, once it goes, this is just going to start to unravel as such. And all that you're looking at here is just a three inch extension past the top of the parachute piston. Uh, in most cases, there's a hook at the top of the piston, <clears throat> but here I'm just making use of that space. And just by a technique of, of winding this cord around the, the, the top of the piston and always running it down and then winding it upwards, running another length down and winding it back upwards, I actually get eight feet of uh, parachute cord right onto that, that piston. And uh, in order to make this very mobile and to make any changes, I've actually made this free floating. So there's, there's a little nail. I'm probably going to use something else on the launch field. But this whole thing can go up, as you see the mark, or it can go down. So if you want to shorten your piston rod or use it somewhere else uh, in another rocket, a smaller one or even a longer one or whatever it may be, you can, you can do that. It's not going to be a problem. So that is in essence how it works. And what happens is this coupler actually hooks up here. and gets attached there. All right, a quick overview of the parachute piston ejection system. Uh, there it is uh, on the motor side there. There's a motor on the ground. Here's the zip tie that this is ultimately going to hook into. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick this up. And I'll give you a close-up demonstration. As the piston compresses, the top of the piston actually acts as a stop, and there's the hook right there. So the zip tie will already be protruding from the rocket body uh, airframe right up into there, and we'll hook it. And uh, once a delay grain burns and it reaches that zip tie, that zip tie is going to melt, and away it goes. It shoots right out. And that, that actually initiates our deployment. So it's a very simple, very, very simple system, very easy to make, and it, it uh, has already worked effectively. All right, we are again on our way to the launch field and we'll we'll see how this goes.